Hello, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Today I've got a quick technique for you that you can use with your card making, your scrapbooking, your mini albums, whatever paper craft project you like. Now this actually came from a live that I did on Craft Stash along with Sam Calcott of Mix Up Craft um, and we were discussing the uh, creative let me just grab these, the Creative uh, Craft Products Nesting Dies. Now there were some new dies out that we were uh, talking about and Sam was demoing and they were the notched edge dies. Now I'm going to be working mostly with the torn edge nestables from the same brand um, but while we were talking about them on, uh, it was actually last Friday, um, I said oh do you know what that looks like a wood slice so I thought I'd do a quick technique for you to show you how I would make these into uh, a cool looking wood slice and you can make this of course any size that you want to suit your project. It's really easy. Besides some circle dies, some nesting dies, all you're going to need is uh, a rubber mat. So I'll just grab this for you. Mine's a tan colour. You can get them in all different sort of colours and sizes. This one's quite a thick one. You might have a thinner one that's supplied with your die cutting machine. If you don't have a rubber mat, you can try this technique with uh, a few layers of paper or cardstock instead in place of the mat. Uh, usually you get a little bit of an embed with that too. So as I say, I'm working with the Creative Craft Products Torn Edge Nestables. Uh, I'm going to link these down below along with lots of other creative craft products as well. There's lots of nesting dies. You can do this with all sorts of shapes. Obviously circles are the obvious choice, but yeah, have some fun with the different shapes as well. So what I've done is I've taken the nesting dies and I've also incorporated just from other brands and other packs that I had laying around a few other circle dies. So these are some straight edge ones, which are here, all from creative to be honest, but they, they are straight edge circle dies. Um, I've got one there and I've got another couple in there that just mix in with the dies so that we get sort of not a uniform spacing between the rings on the wood slice. Now I'm going to first of all dismiss the ones from the centre and just use the outer one. Now the outer one is the final uh, size that you'd like your log slice to be. So if you want it smaller, obviously start with the smaller one. And we're going to die cut first of all. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to hold this down. I love to use the Creative Craft Products low tack tape as well. Um, it's absolutely brilliant for um, sticking, holding your dies down, uh, masking and things like that. And you get three reels for something like $4.99 along with the dispenser as well. So uh, that's just this here. There we go, there's the dispenser. I think it's an absolute bargain. I stock up on that all the time. So again, I'll link that down below. So I'm just by cutting the final shape that I'd like my log slice to be. There we go, remove the tape. As you can see, the tape comes away really nice and easily. And pop that back on my machine to use later. So I'm not worried about this one now, the larger one. I can pop that to the sides. I'm going to take all of the middle ones. Now I've already laid these kind of roughly in size order. And I'm going to place them down onto that um, piece of cardstock there. Now you want to shuffle these around so they all lay flat and what we don't want is them for all, all to be perfectly central. What we want to do is bring them slightly uh, to one edge a little bit, just jiggle them about. Again making sure that none are overlapping, that's the most important thing. Now I'm just going to lift my cardstock up and I'm die cutting these or embossing these with the cutting edge of the die facing down. So underneath my cardstock I'm going to place my rubber mat. Sometimes this can be called a tan mat as well. Now you can of course use your low tack tape to stick all of these together if you wish to. I'm not going to do that because I just want to jiggle them about until I'm happy with them and they should pretty much stay in one place. I'm not going to be lifting this off and um, running it through more than once anyway. So just take a look, make sure you're happy with the positioning of everything. I think that's about right. And then what I'm going to do is just take my uh, my other clear mat and put it or plate and put it over the top. And I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. Now before I do that, I'm just going to remove from here this thin plate. Okay, this should be around about the same thickness as the rubber mat that you've put in. So if you're adding anything like a rubber mat to a plate sandwich, you need to remove something to uh, give you the same pressure throughout. So I'm just removing that plate from underneath. And I'm going to place these all the way through, run them through. Now you may find that you've got a lot of pressure there. You may find that you've actually got less pressure than usual. You want less pressure than when you're die cutting because you don't want this to die cut through your cardstock. The cardstock I'm using is craft cardstock. 
so it's quite sturdy anyway it's also got a nice rustic feel to it so that's run through and I can now just remove all of my dies and put those to the side there we go so I've got a bit of an emboss on there and I've got an emboss on the back now you can choose here which side you want to ink I prefer to go with the back of the piece of paper now I'm going to go with the distress oxide as well to make the to add the color uh, I'm going to go with brushed corduroy which is a light brown I may in the, with this one I actually use gathered twigs it's a little bit darker I want to try a lighter brown and see how it looks so I'm actually going to go direct from ink to the cardstock because I want to capture the raised areas if you prefer you could use a foam blender I wouldn't suggest using a brush for this part because the bristles will capture the cardstock that's down below and you only want to capture, capture the raised areas so just working in circles circles and just brush around very gently. I'm just allowing the ink pad to just gently rest on the surface. There like so you see that is a lighter brown and it's just picking up the emboss there. Now you are going to of course get a few smudges and smears elsewhere and that's absolutely fine because of course a piece of wood would never be absolutely perfect now I'm going to I'll wipe that off in a moment I'm going to take my brush now I've picked up the detail in most of the uh, circles the embossed there I'm just going to come along and just blend that out ever so slightly with a clean dry brush no ink on it whatsoever and keep working that circular motion. I'm not going swiping side to side, I'm just making sure I'm always working in the circular. And there we go. So now we've got the centre of our wood. Now to really make this realistic, I'm going to bring in ground espresso and the coordinating blending brush. I'm just going to capture the edges of this as well to give us that dark brown, like the bark around the outside. So very, very easily. You can see the wood slice coming together ever so quickly. Like I say, if you want to do smaller wood slices, you just cut yourself a smaller circle in the beginning and then place your, your rings, your nesting dies inside of that. So there we go. We have a wood slice very, very quickly created using your dies. You can do, go with the darker shade or you can go with the lighter one depending on what look you're going for. Experiment with your different ink colours. So that was using, for the most part, the torn edge nest ball. So you'll notice that these circles are not perfectly uniform. They've got that torn edge, that raggedy ed edge to them and that's what gives them the nice rustic look. And you'll see each time you do this you'll get a different look because you don't place your circles perfectly central. So have a go with that. Go and shop the nesting dies down below in the description. I've linked everything for you and certainly let me know if you've made a card or a project using this technique. I will see you again very soon. I'd love it if you could subscribe if you haven't already. Take care everybody. Happy crafting.